Praise the Lord Jesus Christ always. Street preaching in San Clemente today. Give Him glory. Give God glory. Well, that worked out perfect. Now I can see how high to have this. Let me get this a little bit over here because that's in the way. I know what I'll do. I'll just move that a little bit. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise His holy name. The scripture says let everything that has breath praise the Lord we come out here to praise God by proclaiming the words of Jesus Jesus said that when his gospel is preached to the ends of the earth then the end will come in Matthew 24 so the gospel being preached means heralded the, the Greek word for preaching is caruso and it, it implies lifting up your voice like a trumpet, declaring the kingdom of God. And that's what Jesus came and preached, declaring the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and be converted. Praise the Lord. Repent of all your sins and follow Jesus is the gospel. Acts 2.38. Repent and believe the gospel and be baptized and you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. So Jesus came and preached the word. He came and he came and just declared that he was preaching the very words of God, that he was God in the Son, that if you know him, you know God. And if you deny him, you deny God. So we're called to preach the words. The Bible says to lift up your voice like a trumpet and declare the power of God. Declare what sin is. Praise the Lord that people will hear the word of God. Praise the Lord Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever will believe in him will have everlasting life. God did not send his son to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Condemnation is not believing that Jesus is the son of God. Praise the Lord. Praise God for you. And the Bible says if you don't believe that Jesus is the son of God, you're condemned already. And then it says this is the verdict that light has come into the world, but men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. And they didn't want to bring them to the light lest they be reproved or exposed. But we who are of God do our deeds in the light that they may be seen that they're manifest of God. So we don't come out here to preach philosophy. We don't come out here to preach psychology. We come out here to preach the very words of God, the same words that Jesus preached that got him crucified. The same words that the apostles preached that got them martyred. You know, it says friendship with the world is enmity against God. If you want to be a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. We come out here to preach that you must be born again of the Spirit of God. That's what Jesus said in John 3, 3. He said, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And you're not born again through the will of man. You're not born again through baptism. That is a faith act. You're born again to the Spirit of God. Praise the Lord that He saves, saves those who draw near unto Him and He gives the Spirit of God. Praise the Lord. And then you're going to understand the kingdom of God. You can't even understand the kingdom of God until you're born again. You can go to church your whole life. I was uh, raised Lutheran uh, and I, I was baptized and I, was, and I believed. I believed the gospel, but I wasn't born again to the Spirit of God doing the will of God. I was still a rebel. I was a believer that was a fake believer, like many people are. Many people who go on in their sin, but go to church, do the sign of the cross. These are fake believers, according to the scriptures that we're going to give you today. We're going to preach the words of God that will, that will never return void. In Isaiah 55, it says, the word of God never returns void. It goes and prospers what it's intended to do. So what that means is the word goes forth into your ears and into your heart and you're either going to receive it or you're going to come against it. You're going to harden your heart or you're going to receive it in a, in a soft heart. That's what the Bible says. It says, harden not your heart. 
as they did in the day of provocation. Receive the implanted word of God into your heart that can save your soul. And so Jesus said, Verily, verily, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So I'm going to come out here and preach the kingdom of God that Jesus preached, that the disciples, the apostles preached. And the second coming of Jesus is part of the gospel. The second coming is he's going to come and return in judgment. The Bible says it is appointed for man once to die and then the judgment. So that's why we're compelled to come out here and preach that you would be in the kingdom of God, that you would be right with God, that you would do the will of the Father by pointing to Jesus, that you would be, obey. If you obey, God gives you understanding, it says in the Psalms. If you disobey, you can be just like a demon that believes and start to manipulate Scripture to fit your sinful life. And, and Jesus warned that many are going to think they're okay. And I'll go over those Scriptures, that these Scriptures will show you that you got to be a doer of God's word, not a hearer only, deceiving your own self. That's what the scripture says. That's what James says. So we praise God. We give him glory. So when I was a rebel, I was a believer, but I ran away from home, got into uh, wicked music, drug trafficking, addictions. I couldn't stop living a sinful lifestyle. And God used a man to convict me and tell me I was working for Satan. And that I was deceived and I knew it was the truth. It hit me in the heart and I knew it was the truth. And so that's why we come out and bring out the scripture. Acts 26, Paul was told to open up their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to the power of God through Jesus Christ. Hey, little buddy, God bless you. <laughs> oh, cute. God bless you, little man. Yes, isn't that cute? The little kids are always drawn to the preaching. And so Paul was saying that there is, there is darkness, there is light, there is Satan in his, in his dark kingdom, and then there is God in his kingdom. And the only way to enter his kingdom is through Jesus Christ for the remission of sins to those who will be sanctified unto an inheritance. Are you one of those being sanctified unto an inheritance? Or are you just a believer that does the sign of the cross, goes to wicked, wicked concerts, lifts up the world and says love is love but isn't isn't born again of the spirit of god to even discern what the kingdom of god is praise god praise his holy name and then after god used a man like a prophet to, to tell me where i was really at with god god then put his spirit in me not that long after when i continued on in my sin and ended up in a jail cell in 2002 and he put his spirit in me and he showed me all my sins were against him and I was in right standing with God. After that, I had, this, I had closeness with God. It says times of refreshing will come to those who are, are repentant. Times of refreshing, it's like a honeymoon where God reveals himself to you and he shows his power and he shows you your true state against him. And then you get, get born again, he puts the spirit in you and now you're in right standing. Now your conscience is clean. Now you want to be obedient to God. Now you want to do the will of God. And that's why we come out here and preach that you would hear these words that can save your soul. Because the Bible says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And how will they hear unless they have a preacher? And how will they have a preacher unless one be sent? And so Jesus says, I send you out to the highways and to the byways, compelling people to come into the kingdom of God in Luke 14. So, you know, there, there isn't much teaching in the Bible about just building a building and staying inside a building. Jesus sent his apostles out. He sent his disciples out two by two to go out and preach the kingdom of God. He didn't say go build a church and sit in the church and feed the homeless. He said go out to the streets and preach the word of God that it will not return void. Teaching all the commandments of God, Jesus said in Matthew 28 when he resurrected the last thing he said after resurrecting and, and showing himself for 40 days, he said to the disciples, go out and teach all the commandments that I've given you all the way to the ends of the earth, baptizing them in the uh, name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. So we're sent out. We're sent out to the, to the streets. We're sent out all over the world, the Bible says, to go preach his kingdom that the world may hear. And the world is given a choice. Whose kingdom are you serving? Are you serving yourself in Satan's kingdom and the fallen angels? Or are you a worker of Jesus 
following Jesus, bearing your own cross. You know what Jesus preached? He says, if anybody come after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me. In Luke 14, he said, if you don't love Jesus more than your own family, then you're not, and your own life, then you're not worthy of him. Jesus said, blessed are those who are not offended of him and his words. And he said, those who are offended of him and his words, he will come back and be a, a offended of them, ashamed of them in the judgment when he comes back with the angels, with the holy angels. So let the word of God uh, sanctify you. That's what Jesus said in John 6, 6, 3. After many disciples left, I had a woman come up to me telling me uh, Jesus didn't preach and Jesus didn't pollute the airwaves. And I said, well, you're wrong. You, you have a different Jesus. Jesus preached the word of God. And the same words I'm giving you, I'm giving you what he preached. And Jesus said when he was preaching in John 6 that many were following him for the food. And, and he says, don't, don't struggle for food. He says, follow me. He says, you have to eat of his flesh, which is food indeed, and drink of his blood, which is drink indeed. He says, don't strive for the food that perisheth. You know, seek him. And so that's what Jesus preached. And when he said that, many people that were believers stopped following him in John 6. And they said, this is a hard saying. And they turned away. So you don't want to turn away from any of Jesus' words. You want to receive them because he has the words of life. And that's what Jesus said in John 6, 6, 3. He said his very words are, are spirit and everlasting life. Do you believe on the Son of God? Do you, not, you don't believe on the Son of God. We pray God have mercy on you. It's 2022 AD after the death. You know, history will tell you that there was a death of Jesus. That's what 2022, no, 2023. That's where we're at. After the death of Jesus. The thing is, though, is he resurrected. Muhammad didn't resurrect. Nobody else resurrected but Jesus. Buddha is still in the grave. Muhammad is still in the grave, but Jesus resurrected. That's why we come out here and preach. Your textbook has no prophecy in it. Your science, your science can't do anything for you. Can't even make a grain of sand. But Jesus resurrected from the dead. Praise God. Praise God. And he said, you know, he said to the people he preached to, you should be believing. God bless you. Thanks for not being ashamed of the word of Jesus. Jesus was telling people, if you don't believe my words, believe the miracles. Jesus came and he cast out devils. He made the blind see. He made the lame leap. He did 40 miracles that are known and many more than that. And he fulfilled the Old Testament where he came to set the captives free. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Praise the Lord Jesus. And so he did all these miracles. And yet still people, they, 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 some of them followed for the miracles. Others still wouldn't believe. That's how... That's how dark our world gets, is that we go on thinking we know it all. And they had the Son of God right there doing all the miracles. Now, many did believe. And you know what the believers did? They believed unto death. They believed unto obedience. They believed that Jesus is the Son of God. And they were willing to pick up their cross and follow Him. How many Christians these days are willing to come out and street preach, or hold signs, or pass out tracts, or, or proclaim the holiness of God. Proclaim the requirements of a believer. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Glory be to God. Glory be his holy name. For he is high and lifted up. In Isaiah 6, Isaiah the prophet, 700 years before Jesus came. You know, the Bible has over a thousand Bible prophecies. It says in 1 Peter 1 and 2 that the, holy, that, that the spirit of Christ was on the prophets proclaiming things to come proclaiming if things to come sit down and listen to the words of God don't be a don't be a, a angry at the word of God I said who denounced Jesus going to his crucifixion crucifixion yeah. Judas and he fulfilled scripture and he fulfilled one of the bible prophecies that they would sell him out for 30 pieces of silver I believe that's in Zechariah. One of many prophecies. There's a, up to a thousand prophecies. But the thing is, are you denying Jesus through your lifestyle? Are you denying him? Or are you picking up your cross and following Jesus? Are you a true believer? Are you a saint of God? Praise the Lord. And so Isaiah, in Isaiah 7, verse 14, 
it says there's gonna he's gonna be one born of a virgin that's Jesus Christ born of a virgin in Micah 5 2 that he would be born in Bethlehem that's where he was born 500 700 years beforehand Isaiah 40 verse 3 that there'd be one crying out in the wilderness make straight the way of the Lord let every hill be brought down and every crooked path be made straight 700 years before John the Baptist was out there being the one who would usher in Jesus Christ according to the scriptures praise our God for he is high and lifted up and we're not following cleverly devised schemes of men we're following the holy prophetic word of God praise the Lord and these are the scriptures we're preaching straight out of scripture that God has put in our heart that we would come out and proclaim his gospel and his kingdom and Isaiah was in Isaiah 6 he was lifted up and he saw Jesus high and lifted up and the robe and his glory and all the angels saying holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty high and lifted up praise our God praise our God and he was undone and that's what it is to be born again you're undone Jesus said blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of God and Isaiah is a shadow of what it's like to be born again in Isaiah 6 woe is me for I am undone I am a man of unclean lips and what I've been hearing is rubbish and what I've been saying is rubbish compared to the holiness of the Lord God high and lifted up and the angel brought him a a, a, a burning coal and it touched his lips and he says thou art art clean and then he and then he hears a voice saying who shall I send and he says send me send me and that's what we are we're sent ones coming out here to preach to you that you might be born again and be sent yourself sent on the mission of God for the kingdom of God you're either working for Satan and his fallen angels or you're working for Jesus bringing people into the kingdom of God Jesus said you are either scattering or gathering. You're either gathering toward him and toward the word of God or you're scattering people away from it. You're either a doer of the word or, or you're not a doer of the word. You're either a believer under, under righteousness or you're not a believer under righteousness. You're either in God's kingdom or you're still in Satan's kingdom. And this is what the, this is what the Bible says. This is what Jesus said. In John 8, he says, why don't you understand my speech? Is it because you're of your father, the devil? They wouldn't receive his words. And these are religious people that wouldn't receive his words. And you know who was hearing his words? The tax collector, the prostitute, those who were sick. Jesus said the sick, uh, he didn't come to call the righteous, but the sick. And so we got to understand that we have all sinned against God. We have all transgressed God's laws. We have all gone our own way, says the Bible. Like sheep, we have all been scattered and gone our own way. And Jesus is the shepherd of our souls. Praise his holy name. Praise God. He is high and lifted up. And Jesus can heal you. And Jesus can deliver you. And Jesus wants you to believe on him. And he will give you the Holy Spirit to help you overcome sin. To help you do the will of God. And in Matthew 7, Jesus, after the Sermon on the Mount... He says, narrow is the way, and straight is the gate, and few there be that find it. But broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many go therewith. And he says, beware of false prophets. And he says, by your fruits you will know them. So Jesus is teaching on judgment, and how you're going to know who is of God. And then Jesus says that many, in Matthew 7, Matthew 7 Verse 21 through 23, he says, many are going to say in that day, the day of judgment, Lord, Lord, they're going to claim his name. And the first thing Jesus says is they weren't doing the will of God. What is the will of God? It's to believe on the son. To believe on the son means you're going to roll your whole life into Jesus. You're going to believe everything he said. You're going to let the word of God change you into the image of Jesus Christ. Praise God. So that's what the will of God is. And then you're going to do what Jesus said for you to do, to go out and preach his words in some form or fashion. You're going to be a representative, an ambassador of Jesus Christ, that there is the only way to come to salvation is through Jesus. And you're going to have that on your lips. The Bible says that if we speak, let us speak the oracles of God in 1 Peter 4. But let's get back to Jesus' judgment 
in Matthew 7 when he said these who claim Lord, Lord, he said they weren't doing the will of God. And then they tried to say that, Lord, we prophesied, we cast out devils, we did many wonderful works. And Jesus says, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. Praise our God. In Ezekiel 18, the prophet Ezekiel, he warned of judgment. Jeremiah warned of judgment. Daniel was one of the captives in Babylonian captivity because God, God has to judge. God has to judge. And in Ezekiel 18, it says, A righteous man, if he be righteous his whole life, if he turn and do wickedness, all his righteousness is forgotten. That's how God can never know you because he blots your name out of the book of life. You can start off well and end bad, it says in Ezekiel 18. And Jesus preached the same thing. Praise the Lord. But the beautiful thing is, is if a wicked man do wickedly his whole life, but turn and repent and do what's righteous, all his wickedness is forgotten. Praise the Lord Jesus. And Jesus warned in Matthew 7 about false believers. And then he said this to show you that they, it's not that they were trying to self-justify themselves into the kingdom of God. It was that they were workers of sin. They were practicing sin because Jesus says right after that, I will tell you a wise man is he who hears the word and does them. He is like unto a man who built his house upon the rock. And when the storm came and the winds blew and the, and the waves crashed, it was founded upon that rock. And then I'll tell you a, a foolish man. He is one who hears the word and does not obey and do them. He is likened unto a man who builds his house on the sand. And when the storm comes and the wind, and the wind picks up and the waves crash, it says great is its fall. So Jesus is saying, be a doer of his word, not a hearer only. In Matthew 13, Jesus talked about four different ways to hear his word. Four different types of hearers. That he is the one that's being preached. He is the seed that's being sown into the whole world. And he says the first hearer does not receive the kingdom of God. He says the second hearer receives it with joy. And the second hearer could be me or you. We could be a believer. But if we don't hear the word and obey it, Jesus is saying this one is likened unto a man who heard the word on stony ground. And when, when persecution and tribulation comes for the word, which is Jesus, these become offended. Another version says they fall away. So that's the kind of hearer you can be. That's the kind of believer you can be. One that does not want to endure tribulation and persecution for Jesus. You don't want to be uh, laughed at for preaching. You don't want to be set apart as a city on a hill for Jesus. You don't want to be excluded. And so you become the kind of believer that wants to believe Jesus the way you want to believe him, not the way he said to believe him. And that's Matthew 13, 21. And then the next year, they, they make it further. But the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, choke it out. No fruit. Only one here understands and has fruit 160 and 30 fold. This is the one who is planted by the waters. In Psalms it says, I'm like a tree planted by the waters. I'm not going to move. And when the storm comes, I'm just going to wait it out because I trust in him. I trust in the Lord Jesus for my salvation. I trust in him that his word will never return void. I trust in him that his word will bring people into the kingdom. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise his holy name. And Jesus continued in the parables. And he said that to you it's given to understand these parables because you're of his kingdom. So to those who are not born again, they can't even see the kingdom. You got to be born again to start to see what the kingdom is. That you can be a false believer. God bless you guys. Believe on Jesus. He died for you. Jesus gave his life for you. That you would give your life for him. Jesus laid down his life for you. That you would lay down your life for him. And Jesus talked about tears. So he talks about his kingdom, that there are wheat and tares. And the tares are the lies sown in by the enemy. Just believe the word of God. Receive it. Don't be angry at the word. 
You can be saved today. If you put your faith in Jesus and you repent of your sins and you believe the gospel that Jesus died for your sins and was resurrected on the third day and that this is going to change you. This is going to rearrange you into the image of Christ, the Bible says. And Jesus said there are tares sown in and tares are lies from the evil one, from Satan and his kingdom. And he said, let them both grow together. So there are many false prophets and false teachers that are, that are tied into the churches. That's why Jesus said, beware of false prophets. By your fruits, you will know them. Or by their fruits, you will know them. A good tree can only produce good fruit. Jesus is giving the analogy. And then he says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Wherever you put your heart at, there your treasure is. Jesus says that by your words, the words you speak, you will be justified. And by your own words, you will be condemned. We're preaching to the whole world. It's down. It's down. I turned it down. The preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. The Bible says lift up your voice like a trumpet. We've already won. We already won a, a case about that. We don't need one. Seau versus New York. Seau versus New York says that we don't have to have a permit. No, we, we, this, is, this is the friend. Believe on Jesus. I can tell you're against Jesus. Well, if you love Jesus, you're going to love his words preached. You're going to be born again of the spirit of God. You're going to do the will of God. So you don't want to hear Jesus. You don't want to hear the Bible. Jesus said, whoever's ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of him. So you're ashamed of him and you're ashamed of his preachers. Yeah, we, we, we do that too. But right now we're preaching. We come out here once a week to preach. That's what we're doing. We're preaching the very words of God. You just not, you just don't understand them. Here, here. Read that. The Bible, says, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And how will they hear without a preacher? And how will they have a preacher unless one be sent? Okay. I, I agree. I agree. I agree. There's a lot of fake ministries out there. That's why we're out here. Do you see this? Christ comes back in flaming fire. Well, no, I'm here to preach. You want to talk? Talk to them. I'm here to preach the word. Christ comes back in flaming fire with the holy angels to judge those who do not know God or obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, listen, listen to the words I'm preaching. I'm supposed to. I'm preaching the very words. No, we're supposed to judge righteous judgment. Jesus said judge with righteous judgment. By your fruits, you will know them. You're talking about ministries that you say this turns off. There are a lot of ministries that won't do this. I know this, the Bible says the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. So okay, I'm, I'm glad that you do. Praise the Lord. By faith, by faith, we're saved. Don't don't come against the preaching that 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 shows that you're not a true child of God. You would at least hear the words and see if they're actually See, now look, that doesn't look like a child of God. Stay away from the equipment, friend. Can somebody keep him away? No, I don't. I don't need to listen to you or you. See, now you're getting angry. No, I don't need to listen. He came and touched my stuff. He's, he's breaking the law. He's breaking the law. You're claiming you're a Christian and you don't want the gospel preached. You're claiming you're a Christian, but you don't want the gospel preached. This is exactly what I just told you Jesus said, that some will be offended at his words and will not endure tribulation and persecution. That's what Jesus said. So you don't want to endure tribulation and persecution for the word of God. So you're a fake here. You're, you're a fake believer, my friend. I'm just telling you, Jesus, Jesus warned there are fake believers. He, he warned, well, you would love the gospel preached. No, I love God. I love his words. I'm not bitter. I don't want you touching my equipment. He did. So why don't you talk to your friend? He was touching my equipment. While you're hanging out with him. So Jesus warned that some will hear, but not endure tribulation and persecution for the word, for Jesus. Jesus said to go out and preach. You're telling me not to. Jesus said to go preach, and you're telling me not to, friend. You say you're, you say you're a believer. 
Jesus said to go out and preach. Luke 14, I send you out to the highways and byways. Matthew 28, go preach his kingdom to the ends of the earth. So Jesus said to preach. A lot of churches say don't preach. You guys choose who you're going to believe. The word of God in Jesus or the fake believers that say don't preach. So Jesus warned there will be believers who will not endure tribulation and persecution for the word. And they will set, they will heap up for themselves teachers who will preach to itching ears to their, according to their own lusts. That's what the Bible says in last days will happen. They will turn aside from the truth and heap up for themselves teachers who will preach what they want to hear. That's what it says in 2 Timothy 4. And what does it say? It says, but you go preach the word. Preach the word in season and out of season because the word of God is good for reproof, for rebuke, for edifying men, building them up for good works. That's what the Bible says. So you're the second person that told me don't preach today but claims Jesus. You're not, you don't have the Jesus of the Bible and that's why I'm out here to preach to the church that has been taught wrong. Jesus said to preach but you guys say don't. Je uh, the Bible says lift up your voice but you guys say don't. So in Matthew 13, when Jesus is telling you how you can hear the word and become offended at it, or you can hear the word, but the love of money and the, and the cares of this world can get in the way. No fruit. Well, what did Jesus say about fruit in John 15? He said the father, anybody that's in the uh, vine, that's a branch that's not bearing fruit, the father cuts off and throws in the fire. Jesus said, abide in me and you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can bear no fruit. If, a, if, if you are in Jesus, but you're bearing no spiritual fruit for his kingdom, you're like a branch that withers and gets cut off and thrown in the fire. We're out here street preaching to the church and to the heathen. That's why the Bible says lift up your voice and preach his words. A lot of the church says don't preach. Just sit inside a building. But Jesus says differently. Go out and preach. Paul says differently. The apostles went out and preached. In the book of Acts 5.32, it says the Holy Spirit is given to those who obey. And before that, it says, who should we obey, God or man? We will lift up our voice because what we've seen and heard, Jesus is resurrected from the dead. And they beat them. They beat them and they were thankful that they were beaten for preaching out on the streets. That's what the Bible says. You could be in church your whole life and, and read over these passages. Acts 5, they're out there street preaching. And they were beaten for street preaching, friend. And so they were beaten for street preaching and they said, praise God that we are found worthy to be beaten for that name because they remembered what Jesus said that in, in the Sermon on the Mount, the seventh blessing, blessed are you when men revile you and speak evil of you for my name's sake. For so they spoke the same way against the prophets. Great is your reward in heaven. <laughs> There's a natural response to the street preaching. You're either a believer and it's edifying you or you're not a believer, or you're a fake believer. It's easier to deal with people who are unbelievers because we know they don't have the Spirit of God. And we were once all lost. But the fake believers, it's much harder to deal with. The ones who don't want you to preach. And we would just say, hey, with meekness, we would ask you to just listen to the words and maybe learn something about the Word of God. That you're actually supposed to be doing the will of God. You're actually supposed to be coming out to the streets. Praise our God. Praise his holy name. Because there is a judgment a com coming. In Matthew 13, as Jesus tells you the parable of the sower, which is how you can receive his word four different ways. He tells you about the wheat and the tares, that the tares are the lies sown in from the enemy. Let them both grow together, because at the end of the age, Jesus sends out angels to reap out of his kingdom. My friends, he's reaping out of his kingdom. What's he reaping out? Those who offend and those who practice sin. Praise God for you guys. Praise God, brother. God bless you guys. Let me get a hug. I haven't seen you guys forever. Oh, God bless you. Come on, you. Come on over here. Good. Good to see you guys. You guys want to say anything to the people? You, know, you, you got it handled, brother. Hi, brother. Yeah, God bless you. God bless you guys and your family. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God for the saints of God. Praise the Lord. So what happens? At the end of the age, Jesus sends out his angels to reap out of his kingdom those who offend and those who practice sin. So he's reaping out of his own kingdom. In 1 Peter 4, it says, The house of the Lord is judged first, 
And if scarcely a believer be saved, where will the ungodly and sinner appear? So the, the house of the Lord is judged first. God is judging his, his church right now. We see the age approaching. We see the great falling away that Jesus warned about in Matthew 24. Many false prophets, many false Christ. The word Christos means anointed, false anointed. So there are many tares sown in to churches. Not preaching the word, uh, turning away from the truth. Second Peter 2 says, just like there were false prophets, there will be false teachers bringing in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, putting him to open shame, it says. It says these people make merchandise out of you. How many churches do you see making merchandise on TV out of people? That's what it says in Second Peter, their, their tendency is. They'll make merchandise out of you using God's name for their own money. And then he calls them cursed children. And he says, if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down into chains of outer darkness, reserved into the day of judgment. And if God uh, only saved Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and eight people. And then he says that God uh, judged Sodom and Gomorrah. Hey, friend, we pray that you would just hear the word and believe. Repent and believe. Just believe the gospel, my friend. And start reading the word of God and see what we're saying is the truth. So the God, the God that judged is, is what we're seeing in 2 Peter 2. If God spared not the angels, if he only saved eight people with Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and God made Sodom and Gomorrah an example to us, how much more do we need to be ready is what it's saying for that day approaching. Friend, it actually has turned way down this time. We turned it way down this time, friend. Praise our God. Praise his holy name. And in 2 Peter 2, it says some uh, turn away from the truth. And they, they, they go the way of Balaam, the madness of the prophet. That's how somebody starts in ministry right. But then they turn away from the truth. And they go the way of Balaam, the madness of the prophet. If you have ears to hear and you see what, what's happening in this day and age, you know that many in the church have turned away to promote abortion or promote uh, abortion, to promote ungodly sexual things being taught uh, all these ungodly things that God judged already you're seeing a false church made manifest in these last days just like the Bible says You hear the train, that's why the, the laws have passed that we're allowed to have a microphone to be heard up to a certain decibel level. We've already been to court over this and won, praise God. Praise our God. The church that hates the street preachers should really be thankful because the street preachers won cases in court allowing us to be heard. Praise our God. So 2 Peter 2 warns of false prophets, false teachers, turning away from the truth, going the way of Balaam. In Numbers 22, it says that Balaam ended up selling out God for riches and for fame. He was double-minded. He wanted to get all the views or whatever the case is today. You have so many false prophets today prophesying Trump is going to be in, prophesying about uh, the COVID uh, sorcery shot. Uh, just false prophets. You have so many people in these churches that are getting busted for adultery. They do not inherit the kingdom of God, my friends. Praise our God. Lift up your voice like a trumpet for the true word of God. Don't be ashamed. God bless you. Don't be ashamed of the true word of God. You're not right with God, my friend. You're just not right with God. By your fruits you will know them. Your friend says we don't judge, but Jesus said judge with righteous judgment. By your fruits you will know them. Do not throw what is precious out to your pearls out to dogs and swine, lest they trample it under. R right there it says that after Jesus is telling you how to judge. First take the, the log out of your own eye. Yes, I already started preaching today saying I was a fake believer. 
So I'm preaching to the people who still are fake believers, giving them the word of God, that they can take the log out of their eye and start preaching the word of God in truth. So in 2 Peter 2, we're warned of false prophets, false teachers, false converts, turning away from the truth. It's down low today compared to where it's been. Praise our God. And then it says it'd be better for you not to know the way of truth, for, for, for you to believe the word of God. It'd be better for you not to believe than after believing to turn away. And like the true proverb says, a dog goes back to his vomit and a pig wallowing in the mud. Praise our God. This is what Peter preached. This is what Jesus preached. This is what Paul preached. Jesus said in Matthew 24, he that endured to the end shall be saved. Endure. It says in, uh, Paul says that they will not endure sound doctrine in latter times. People will not endure sound doctrine. They won't want the gospel preached. They'll say, turn it down and try to take my equipment. Not even save themselves. Not knowing the gospel. Another woman said that Jesus didn't come and preach and he didn't pollute the airwaves. She's calling it pollution. She goes to church. These are false converts. These are people that aren't doing the will of God if they're coming against the word of God. So many people, so many people dying of drug overdose. So many people dying of suicide in these last days. The kids being taught they might not be male and female in the schools. But no outrage against that on unholiness. No outrage against that. They'd rather come against the preaching. They'd rather come against the testimony of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy. I don't take advice from heathen. The spiritual man judges all things spiritual with spiritual. But the carnal man can't understand spiritual things. And the carnal man he's talking about is a Christian that's still carnal. So uh, people who are claiming they're Christian but are still carnal, they can't judge righteously. So who are we going to believe? The Word of God or people that say don't judge? When Jesus said judge with righteous judgment. When Paul said the spiritual man judges all things. When Paul said don't you know that we're going to judge angels? And this is the scripture that they hate. That lukewarm Christians and false teachers hate. And it's in uh, 1 Corinthians 5 and 6. Expel the wicked offender who is in sexual sin. Expel him. Get him out of the church. And then it says, Be not deceived. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Neither fornicators, idolaters, covetous, drunkards, sodomites, homosexuals. Galatians 5 goes on to include drug use. All these adulteries, fornication, it says these do not inherit the kingdom of God. And then it says, but such were some of you, but you were washed. You were washed in Jesus. You were justified in Jesus. You were sanctified in Jesus. So, but such were some of you. Not that you're continuing to do it. And that's what a lot of the churches aren't telling you. When you are uh, baptized, you're supposed to be baptized into the death of Jesus and resurrected in the new life. Putting the deeds of the body to death. From this point on, this is the gospel. This is why we come out and preach. Praise our God. So in Matthew 24, after Jesus warned about the great falling away, many false prophets, false Christ, he said men's hearts are going to grow cold because lawlessness will increase. Iniquity will abound. That's, a, that's what he's saying the last days are going to be like. Lawlessness increasing. Iniquity runs forth. And men's hearts growing cold from a lack of love. And then Jesus gives another parable. And he says that there are two servants. If one grows an evil heart and beats his other servants with many stripes and is out with the drunken. So do you hear the words? This is showing you two kinds of believers again. 
one that grows an evil heart. It didn't just happen. It became, they became in, in, involved in the world. They became in worldly. And here's how you know it. Because they were out with the drunken, meaning they were still in their sin. If an evil servant beats his other fellow servants, what happens? Well, Jesus tells you what happens. When he returns, they get cut off and appointed to, with the hypocrites where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus not only street preached, Jesus warned of hell 42 times. So who should we obey? The false churches or Jesus? In Psalms, it says 30 or 37, it says the righteous man, his mouth speaketh of judgment. He's warning of judgment. Jesus came and preached judgment. He says, unless you repent, ye will all likewise perish. So if this is foreign to, to you and you've been in church, you're, you're not following Jesus the right way. You're not even eating his word to know what he even said. That's what we're seeing a lot of today and a lot of times. So Jesus is showing you uh, fake believers in Matthew 7 where they're not doing the will of God and where they're, where they're practicing sin and they say that they're good. But what does Jesus say? Depart from me, ye that work lawlessness. What do we see in Matthew 13, 41 through 43? The reaping out of his kingdom. We see it over and over. We just saw it in Matthew 24. A servant can grow an evil heart, beat his other servants with many stripes, and is out with the drunken. Matthew 25, more kingdom parables. The parable of the talents. The ones that were doing the will of God when Jesus judges, and he's going to say, good and well done, my faithful servant. He's going to give extra to them because they were doing the will of God. But that servant that buried his talent, God is very angry at that servant. And he gets cut off. Showing you another fake believer right there. Matthew 25 goes on to say a parable of ten virgins. Five are wise and five are foolish. The wise virgins had oil. They were ready for Jesus to return. The foolish virgins didn't have any oil. They weren't ready. It's showing you a church that wasn't ready. When Jesus returns, the foolish ones say to the wise, give us oil. And they say, go get your own. Showing you they had to have discernment. So they go to get their own oil. And when they come back, the master's already come. And they bang on the door. And he says, I don't know you. Showing you a false, a false church that's not ready for Jesus to return. So Peter warned about judgment. Peter warned about false teachers. In 2 Peter 2, 2 Peter 3, Paul warned about it over and over. James warned, don't be a hearer only, be a doer of the word. If you're a hearer only, you're deceiving yourself. A double-manded mind is unstable in all his ways. He's like a man that looks in the mirror and walks away and quickly forgets. That's showing you that the word is being taken away from them. They're not a doer of the word. Remember how the Holy Spirit's given to those who obey? Acts 5.32. You go through that chapter. They were being beaten for preaching the words of God. Who should we obey? God or man? Obedience is required as, as a true believer. That's how you get the Holy Ghost. When you get the Holy Ghost, you won't go back to the world. And if you do, you won't like it. You won't like it. You'll, you'll come back. You'll say, uh, I, I want to follow Jesus. I don't want to go back into the the, the uh, pit. I don't want to go back to the vomit. It says in 2 Peter 2. Praise God. Praise God. Hi. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so cute. Praise God for you guys. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise his holy name. And so Paul warned. He said in 1 Timothy 4. That the Holy Spirit expressly states that some will depart from the faith. And so if we depart from the faith, we open ourselves up to seducing spirits. And it says doctrines of demons. When kids are being taught they might not be male and female, that is not a doctrine of Christ, my friends. That's a doctrine of demons. God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. And so anything that will take you away from the words of Christ is not abiding in the doctrine of Christ. You're not going to bear fruit. You're going to fall away. That's what the scripture teaches. And so some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. Their conscience will be seared with a hot iron. They will start speaking lies and hypocrisy, the scripture says. That's how you know their fruit. In 2 Timothy 3, he says perilous times will come. 
Men will be lovers of self, proud, boasters, arrogant, despisers of all that's good, truce breakers, disobedient to parents, having a form of godliness, but denying the power therein. From such turn away. These are like Janice and Jambres who sneak into women's houses laden with sins. They are ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of truth. And it says their deeds will be made manifest. That's what the scripture says, that we're going to see it to those who are of the kingdom of God. In these last days, there's so many more street preachers as the Spirit of God is moving and sending people out. People are leaving a lot of the false churches and coming out to the streets. Praise our God. Praise our God. Praise our God. He is holy. Yeah, the Bible says the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to we who are being saved is the power of God. To one we are, the, we are life to life, and to the other we're death to death, the Bible says. Praise our God. Jesus says, I wish you were hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. To Laodicea, the seventh church. When Jesus comes back, he's judging the churches by their works. In Revelation chapter 3, to Laodicea, I wish you were hot or cold, Jesus said. But because you're lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. And this church says they are rich and has need of nothing and plenty of goods. But Jesus says this church is poor, blind, naked, wretched, and miserable. Jesus says to this church, I counsel you to buy from Jesus gold tried in the fire, that you may be clothed in white, that the shame of your nakedness be not exposed, that you may have eye salve to see. Behold, I chasten those I love. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. I stand at the door and knock. If anybody will open, I will come in and sup with him, and he with me. To those who overcome, I will grant to sit on my throne, even as I overcame and sat on my father's throne. In the last days, the Bible says there's going to be a famine, not for bread, but a famine for the Word of God. The deeds of the church are just being made manifest in these last days. They don't like the preaching. A lot of them are ashamed to go to the abortion clinics. A lot of them are ashamed. The Calvary Church is ashamed of your signs, Doug. Yeah, some of the churches are ashamed of your signs. I asked a lot of these churches to come out to the abortion clinics. The Calvary pastor was ashamed of your signs. I sent him some of the signs. He says, that's not the love of Christ. So these are some of the churches you guys put your faith and hope in. Yeah, your pre-tribulation rapture is a false teaching. Jesus said that, they will, that you have to endure tribulation and persecution. 2 Thessalonians 2 says that do not be deceived as if by another spirit or a letter, another spirit of a demon spirit, as if the day of the Lord is at hand and are gathering together with our God. That day cannot happen unless there be a great falling away first and that the man of sin be revealed. Don't you know I told you these things before when I was with you? Don't believe it. That gets rid of pre-tribulation rapture right there. These things have to occur. The great falling away. The man of sin be revealed. Revelation 7 says, Who are these, sir, thou knows? These are they which came out of great tribulation and washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. So what does that mean? That means Revelation chapter 12. They overcome the beast system by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Loving not their lives unto the death. They follow the Lamb where the Lamb goes. If you are ashamed of the testimony of Jesus, you are not right with God. If you'd rather be watching your football, if you'd rather be going to church once or twice a year, and, and you're into football, and you're into uh, getting drunk, and you're into all these other things, you're not right with God. You're a fake believer, not right with God. Praise our God. Revelation 14, it tells you the same thing, that these are they... Uh, these are the first fruits unto God. It's right there in the scripture. It's not pre-tribulation rapture. It's not until the rapture doesn't happen until the judgment start pouring out and the man of sin is revealed. Until we see the church that's fraudulent in 2 Timothy 3 that their deeds are made manifest 
until we see the many false Christs and false prophets that we're seeing right now. We see it right now. The deeds are made manifest. Do you see it? Do you love the Word of God? Are you obeying it? Praise our God. Revelation chapter 3. Believe in Jesus, friend. Don't mock Jesus. I know you're young, but don't mock Jesus. Don't mock him. Jesus died for you. Jesus died for you. He laid down his life for you, youngsters. Don't mock God. Don't mock God. Have mercy on the mockers, God. See, it's easier to deal with the, with the people who are mockers and scoffers because they're, they're not part of the church. It's harder to deal with the people that claim to go to church and tell you not to preach. Tell you to do the exact opposite of what Jesus said. And here's how Jesus is judging the churches. Revelation chapter 3, the church of Sardis, they think they're alive, but they're dead, Jesus says. There's only a few walking in white. Jesus says, strengthen the things that remain. I have not found your works perfect before my God. The word perfect means complete. He says, remember what's been handed down. He says, to those who overcome, I will not blot out your name out of the book of life, but I will speak to the Father about you. Earlier in the Gospels, Jesus says, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before the Father. If you will speak about me before men, I will speak to the Father about you. Another little hidden gem there about if you're doing the will of God or you're not. Are you speaking about Jesus? Are you ashamed of him and his words? Because this church thought they were alive and Jesus said they're dead. Only a few walking in white. What does it mean to walk in white? Well, let scripture tell you. Revelation 19, these are they who were called, chosen, and faithful. They do the righteous acts of the saints. So there's actually work that you're doing that, that perfects your faith. That's why James says uh, that um, a man is not justified by faith alone, but by works also. You show me a man that has faith, and I'll show you a man that has works. Even the demons believe and tremble. You believe in one God, good. Even the demons believe and tremble. You show me faith, and I'll show you works. So James is saying that you've got to be a doer of the word, not a hearer only. And so the righteous acts of the saints is doing the will of God. Who did Jesus uh, rebuke in Matthew 7 and then cast out? The ones who weren't doing the will of God and practicing sin. Matthew 7. How's he judging the churches? Saying that there was only a few walking in white. So you got to be one of those few. What did he say in Matthew 7? That only a few there be that find it. What did Jesus say in John 15? He said that he testifies that the works of this world are evil. And that you are not above his, of him. So that you're going to be hated by all, by all people for his namesake. That's what Jesus said a believer is going to face. The Bible says that let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity, depart from sin. So if you're naming Christ and not and still in sin, he's saying don't do that. You gotta you gotta overcome your sin and, and depart from it, turn away from it. It says, All who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. We got churches that don't want any persecution. They tell you not to preach. Tell you to just make friends with people. But the Bible says the opposite. Friendship with the world is hatred against God. That's what the Bible says. We're supposed to be a city on a hill set apart. The Bible says that we are saints of God. We are a peculiar people. We're zealous for good works. Titus 2 says the grace of God hath appeared to all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness, to deny worldly lusts, to live soberly, to live righteously in this present age, looking for that blessed hope, the Lord Jesus Christ, that he is uh, um, sanctifying us as a peculiar people, uh, pulled away from sin, it says, that we're set apart zealous for good works, a peculiar people. Praise our God. So I'm going to believe Jesus. I'm going to follow him and his words. I'm going to do what he says to do. And he says to, to go out and preach and teach about his commandments. And in Revelation, it tells you you get a blessing for those who read the prophecy of this book and those who hear it and those who keep the things that are written therein. And we see Jesus resurrected. So the kingdom of God, he came as a suffering servant. He's coming as a lion of the tribe of Judah. He's coming in judgment, my friends. And if you love Jesus, you, you want to see this day approach. In fact, you get a crown. 
for wanting to see the, the return of Jesus, for wanting him more than you want this world. In Revelation chapter 2, to the church of Ephesus, Jesus says, I know your works, that you've labored for his name's sake, that you can't bear those who are evil, that you've tested those who claim their apostles and found them out to be liars. So that was all good things, Jesus said. These are laborers. These are street preachers. But he says, this I have against you, that you forgot your first love. Remember where thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will move thy candlestick. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I hate, says Jesus Christ. To those who overcome, I will grant to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of my God. The overcomer gift is to eat the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God for the church of Ephesus. The church of Smyrna, they're a poor, persecuted church. Jesus says to this poor, persecuted church, you think you're poor, but you're rich. Jesus says this church that's persecuted, turn to God, don't be evil. Believe on Jesus, he died for you, friend. God bless. Yeah, he died for you, friend. He wants you to work for him and his kingdom. Praise our God. So the poor church, he said, the devil's going to cast some of you into prison 10 days. Be faithful unto the death. He says, be faithful unto the death to this church. He says, do not deny his name even unto the death. To those who overcome, they will not taste the second death. What is the second death? It's the judgment. It's the judgment when Jesus lines up the sheep and the goats in Matthew 25. Some are going to enter and hear, good and well done, my faithful servant. Others are going to go to the second death. Hell was created for Satan and his angels, the fallen angels, it says in Matthew 25. And that's what's going into the second death. And this church of Smyrna is told to be faithful unto the death and to overcome they will not taste the second death. These are Jesus' words. In Revelation, yeah, I think we're called to preach. I think we're called to sound the alarm and wake up the sleeping church. Let them know what the actual scripture teaches, what it says. God will judge all fornicators, the Bible says in Hebrews. In Hebrews it says, shall, you know, if we go back and transgress and sin willfully after we have had the uh, redemption through Jesus, that we trample on the blood as if it's common, putting him to open shame. Yeah, the Bible is very serious about being a believer in Jesus. And you should see that for yourself when reading the Gospels. That's why Jesus said, count the cost all the way to the end to be his disciple in Luke 14. He didn't preach once saved, always saved. He preached, count the cost all the way to the end and gave you imagery of it. And showed you a man who'd be like a man building a tower and only going halfway. He's showing you it's a, it's a, a territorial spiritual war. By sending out a warrior, sending out a delegation, if they only went halfway, they'd look foolish. These are Jesus' words, very serious about following him, making sure you're doing it the way he said. Praise our God. Praise our God. And then Revelation chapter 2 to the church of Pergamos, he says the very seed of Satan is there and that doctrine of Balaam that I told you about in 2 Peter 2, they forsook the right way. But then he points in the middle of that mess to his faithful martyr Antipas, who was martyred. The word martyr means witness. Are you a witness for Jesus? Jesus said, let your light shine before men. What I tell you in secret, go yell from the rooftops. What good is a light if you put a bushel over it, says our Lord Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount. Are you faithful like, like uh, the martyrs? Are you faithful? unto the death well that's what Jesus is requiring of, of Smyrna what makes you or me any better than them wanting to escape a, with a pre-tribulation rapture what makes you any better than them Jesus looks he's, God is not a respecter of persons he is the same yesterday today and forevermore the way he's preaching and warning about and revelation applies to all of us that's why it says he who has an ear to hear let him hear what the spirit saith unto the churches 
So Pergamos, to those who overcome, I will give him hidden manna. He will, he will feed you. God fed the Israelites when he brought them out of captivity. He took care of them. He protected them through 10 plagues. That's another picture where we see what the hardened heart looks like. He hardened Pharaoh's heart. He showed his power. And he hardened Pharaoh's heart. And that's what happens if you continue to reject the grace of God. Your heart becomes harder and harder. You get given over to your sin and your lifestyle. And the Bible says you can become reprobate. And, he, and we hear reprobation about false teachers. Titus 1. That they're reprobate. Unto any good works. That their mouths must be stopped. From teaching things that subvert whole households. For money's sake. Praise the Lord. Praise God for you guys. Praise God. Matthew 13, 22. Some believe... But the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, choke it out. Praise our God. Revelation chapter 2 to Thyatira. He says, I know your works, your charity, and your last are better than the first. But this I have against you. Suffer that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and lead kids into sexual sin and food sacrificed to idols. I gave her space to repent, and she repented not. To as many as have this doctrine that knows the depths of Satan, he will throw them into great tribulation and put her children into a sickbed and kill her children. And all the churches will know that Jesus judges the thoughts and hearts. Again, Jesus showing you that all the churches are going to see this judgment. They're going to see this time that are abiding in him. So judge with righteous judgment. The scripture says you're supposed to see these things. Jesus said, I tell you these things beforehand, that when they come to pass, you are prepared. Praise God. Hallelujah. That God gave me his word to preach today, not even feeling well. I came out here because when I do preach, when I'm not feeling well, the Holy Spirit feeds me and, I, and he recalls the scriptures to memory. So I'm going to end it with Revelation chapter 12. The last days, uh, Satan and the fallen angels are cast down. The gospel has been preached to all nations. The world is given over to a lot of whatever they want instead of following Jesus in spirit and truth. And the world is given over. And we see that day here. We see the kids taught these wicked things in these schools and media. We see the church falling away, proclaiming, you know, gay marriage and all of this stuff. When Jesus said, you got to be born again. And Jesus warned about the judgments of Sodom and Gomorrah. Be born again in the spirit of God. Yeah, but you still have a chance to repent. Believe on Jesus. He died for you. He died for you. He loves you. We love you too. God will make you a new creature in Christ. God will make you a new creation. He will make you a new creation, okay? He'll give you new desires on your heart. He took all addictions away from me and almost all the street preachers you see out there that, that have to preach. They're called to preach because we got the good news that Jesus can take you from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to the power of God through Jesus Christ. Paul said, Cursed am I if I don't preach. The Bible talks about preaching all the way from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Praise our God. So Satan and his fallen angels are cast down. It says, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. The devil's been cast down to you knowing that his time is short. And how do you overcome? You overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Loving not your own life even unto death. That more people will hear the gospel and see the true faith of God. That God abides in us. That God is in us. And once you're born again, the Spirit of God is in you. It's dwelling in you. Praise our God. Praise our God. Yeah, you got to be born again of the Spirit of God. And God dwells in you, makes His dwelling in you. And He lives in you. Praise our God. Praise our God for you kids. Praise our God for you kids. Praise our God for you kids. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise our God. For he is mighty to be praised. He is mighty to be praised. Praise our God for you kids. God bless you guys. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise his holy name. God bless you in Jesus' name. God bless you in Jesus' name. And, and Jesus said, unless a man be converted like a little child, he cannot enter the kingdom of God in Matthew 18. Unless a man be converted like a little child. 
now would a little child, you guys, want a baby in the womb slaughtered? No, right? So when you're a little kid, you know that you wouldn't want that, right? That's what Jesus meant about being converted like a little child. You want the best for everybody. You don't want to see anybody get slaughtered at an abortion mill where they chop up baby parts and sell them. So Jesus said, you must be converted like a little child to enter the kingdom of God. And he says, woe to those who lead the least of the little ones that are leaning toward him astray. It'd be better for you to have a millstone around your neck at the day of judgment than to lead these little kids astray. That's Jesus' words. And then he says, if your eye causes you to sin, deal with it, pluck it, tear it, and get rid of it. It says, better to enter life with one eye than go into hellfire, Jesus' words. God bless you guys, you little ones. God bless you. God bless you. Praise our God. Praise our God, you guys. Yes, praise our God. For he is mighty to be praised. Our God is an awesome God. He's mighty to be praised. I feel better already. My God's a healer. Praise God. Praise God for God. Sending Jesus. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the deliverer. Jesus is the strong tower. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through the Son. Praise our God. I feel good. I was sick before. I had a sore throat. And God healed me. He is a mighty healer. Praise our God. Praise His holy name. Praise our God. He is mighty. Praise our God. Praise our God. Hallelujah.